I love when I do these things on my own. I'm like, like last week, the Dolphins. I was like, oh, doing the Dolphins on my own because like I don't really know any Dolphins content creators. Then I have people mention me like, I'm a Dolphins fan. I'm like, you're fucking mad. What does that do for me? Where do you live? Redcliffe. Sweet. Do you want me to fly you in for a 20 minute episode? Where we read a team list. Where can you see? Like, uh, uh, am I just sort of at my leg at the yeah, bottom? Or where cool. You can see. Sweet. Cool. All right. Good to roll. Yeah. G'day, guys. Welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast. Just forgot to do that. That's a good start. Ready to go? Good gear. G'day guys, welcome back to so the Rugby League Guru Podcast coming to you live from the CBA Centre of Excellence. We're going through another best 17 today on my own, getting stuck into the Melbourne Storm. Uh, personally, I think most of this side sort of picks itself. There are a couple of interesting spots in the back row and with their bench rotation. Uh, but for a lot of their back line, I think it picks itself. I think the big talking point is how some of these guys go this season. Obviously, all eyes on Ryan Pappenhausen, the superstar at the back. I think because of injuries over the last couple of years, I think people have potentially forgotten just how good Ryan Pappenhausen is. Uh, you know, only a few years into his NRL career was really on the verge of knocking James Sinesco out of a New South Wales side a few years ago. He's already a Clive Churchill medalist. Um, I think that me and Timmy were looking the other day. He's at the moment, he's at about $41 or something like that to win a top point scorer this season. If he can just play out the year and he is the goal-kicking fullback at Melbourne, thanks for coming. He will be right up there with the very best of them. Uh, obviously, the spine is absolutely star-studded. We'll go through it. A couple of new arrivals and whatnot. A few guys leaving, but no... Huge major losses for this Melbourne Storm side. Justin O'Lam obviously leaving. Uh, they gained Sean Bloor. So uh, a couple of negatives, a few positives. I think all in all, the Melbourne Storm side will be very similar to what it was last year. Uh, for me, I look at the Melbourne Storm and they're a good footy side. There is no doubt about that whatsoever. But the reality is in this competition, there are... Bad sides, average sides, good sides. And then last year, there was Brisbane and Penrith. Uh, whether Brisbane are going to be at that level again next year, we'll have to wait and see. I probably think they will be. Will Penrith be? In my opinion, yes. Can the Melbourne Storm get to that level? Uh, that's what we need to see. And we know that this club has a very rich history of uh, you know being right at the top for a long period of time. And you know, to be honest with you, last year, I wasn't overly impressed with the Melbourne Storm as a footy side. And they finished third or fourth. I mean... To not blow me away and still be a top four team is unbelievable. And it simply didn't impress me because they weren't at the level of your Brisbane Broncos, your Penrith Panthers, which I think at the back end of the season, when you come down to finals footy, that obviously showed. I actually thought going up against the Brisbane Broncos, uh, first week of finals, that they'd give them a really good shake. The reality is they didn't get close to them. And that, that was sort of the moment that I realized, oh, fuck, okay, this Brisbane side is the real deal because they blew Melbourne away. For me, the problem with the Melbourne Storm in 2023, and it has been the problem for two or three years, they're probably one absolute gun forward short. Uh, the advantage going into this year, a guy like Christian Welsh returning from an Achilles injury, I believe it was, you know, obviously first season back for a front row forward. The second season tends to be the one where you really find your feet again. So big advantage having Welsh there back at his best. Nelson with another season under his belt. I saw that he met Tom Brady the other day. Wild the size of Tom Brady compared to Nelson. Insane. Uh, but the Melbourne Storm... This team is coming together. Sean Bloor's arrived. We know Craig Bellamy's got a rich history of getting the absolute best out of guys like him, like stock standard back rowers with huge potential. Hopefully he is the forward that they've been missing. If not, they need another big fella to stand up in this team, whether it's um, Penne, who I've been a big fan of for a long time, but let's be honest here, he probably hasn't lived up to the standards that I thought he would by this point of his career. Uh, Tepai Moreau is another one, huge potential. Jack Howarth, Let's talk about potential. My God, how I feel like he signed a five-year deal six years ago and we haven't seen him in first grade yet and God knows when we will. Very, very awkward one to work out there, Jack Howarth, and you could have him at centre, in the back row, on the bench, or number 30 in the squad and you go, yeah, sure, that makes sense. It's just so hard to work out where he lands. The Melbourne Storm, they need a big forward to stand up this year. If they're going to compete with those top sides for me, 
They really need someone to stand up and dominate in the forward pack. They've got the spine to beat everyone. The supporting act just needs to help them out. Let's go through the Melbourne Storm side. At fullback, as we said, Ryan Pappenhausen, an absolute superstar of our game. I see comments on social media and I see people's opinions on Pappy. And I do genuinely think that a lot of people have just forgotten how fucking talented this guy is and how much ability he has. Is his body going to hold together? Your guess is as good as mine. I really do hope so. He's one of my favourite players in this competition to watch. Something special about an undersized player in the NRL that absolutely dominates. We don't see enough of it. And I really do hope that Pappy can find his best form again and start to turn that tide. Similar to guys in the past, like your Preston Campbells and whatnot of the world, I absolutely love watching Pappy play. Obviously, speed is greatest asset. How's he going to come back from this? I'm not too sure. I'm expecting him to start slow, but I think he will warm to the task. I thought it was very evident uh, when he came back from his head knocks a couple of years ago. He was very hesitant for the first five or six weeks. I wouldn't be surprised to see a similar situation with Pappy. The bright side, if it doesn't work out with Pappy, which touch wood it will, uh, we have obviously got the young superstar, Sua Falongo, who I've spoken about a lot. I personally don't think he's ready to be a full-time fullback right now. I think a little bit more experience in Queensland Cup will be fantastic for him. You might even see him coming off the bench and whatnot for the Melbourne Storm. But fullback stocks, and if there's absolute carnage and both of those guys get injured, uh, you've got... Guys like Nick Meaney, you've got guys like Cameron Munster, you've got a heap of guys you can shove in there at fullback who will do a tremendous job. So they're sitting well as far as the one jersey. Wingers, I think Will Warbrick, the brick. What a season he had last year. He was tremendous. Obviously came over from Rugby Sevens the year before. I watched a lot of him in the Queensland Cup. Was very impressive, still very raw. And I thought probably at the start of last season, the first five or six weeks, I thought he's going good. But there are a couple of weaknesses in his game that he needs to sort out. And I thought it was really evident throughout the year how much Will Warbrick worked on his weaknesses. And I, th I thought by the end of the season, he was playing like one of the better wingers in the competition. Obviously scored the match-winning try against the Roosters uh, at the end of the year. A great moment for him. And I think he picks himself on one wing. The other side, Xavier Coates. A guy that when he arrived at the Melbourne Storm, I think we all had him tipped as he's going to be the breakout superstar in our game. And he's had his moments at the Melbourne Storm, there's no doubt about it. But I think consistently he probably hasn't reached the heights that we thought he would have. Uh, obviously, he's been in and out of the Origin team and whatnot, but uh, I think he is a fantastic winger and I think he's an automatic there as well. Centers, it gets interesting. Remus, uh, Remus Smith will be one of the options there. He, I know he's not the most exciting player in the world and he doesn't put up super coach stats and all this stuff. Defensively, he is a very solid center. I think Wayne Bennett is a big Remus Smith. Wayne Bennett. Craig Bellamy is a big Remus Smith fan. and I think he will land one center spot. Uh, I think Nick Meaney will be the other one. I'm not convinced Nick Meaney is a center, but I think he is good enough to just have to be in this back line somewhere and center might be the spot that he is best suited to fitting into this team. So I think they'll go Remus Smith and Nick Meaney. You've still got guys like young Tonema Payer. Uh, I've seen people throw up Sua Far Longo playing there. I don't think he's a big enough body to play in the centers just yet. If you put Sewer in the centers, you write my game plan for me if I'm playing Melbourne. So I think they'll go in a different direction. I think Nick Meaney and Remus Smith will be the centers, uh, but they have got plenty of options there between young Tottenham Apaya, uh, Marion Seve. Uh, you've obviously got Jack Howarth as well, who could get a bait there. So plenty of options in the centers, but I think Nick Meaney, Remus Smith, I think that's the best one. Six and seven, who are we going to pick here? Uh, out of all the, the entire competition, it probably is the best spine in the game. From one to nine, it is fantastic. And the halves, two absolute superstars in our game. Cam Munster at 5'8", Jerome Hughes at seven. We'll start with the money man first. Uh, just a genuine superstar. You know that Cam Munster, on a Sunday afternoon when they're playing the Titans on the Gold Coast, he's probably going to put his feet up. He's not going to do much. When they get to Friday night footy and they're playing Brisbane or Penrith or finals footy, you know you're going to get the absolute best out of Cam Munster. That's where he's got a little bit of Wally Lewis about him. He almost coasts through the easier games, but when they need him and the big games come... It tends to be money that stands up. We've seen it in the Origin Arena time and time again, unfortunately. Cam Munster at 5'8", uh, really starting to come into what I think will be his Imperial years, starting to get to that age now uh, where I think Munster can do some pretty special things over the next couple of years. Jerome Hughes, 
similar to Munster, started as a fullback, transitioned into the 5'8 jersey and has made a really good fist out of it. I think that the way that he has just improved year on year and just added little bits, little elements to his game as he's gone, uh, the way that he uses his back rower, I think he's one of the best halves in the game as far as positioning his back rower. And my God, when he comes off that right foot, shut the gate, it is over. Jerome Hughes and Cam Munster, absolutely love these two as a halves pairing. I think they're two of the most entertaining to watch. Uh, and they, they're, they're one of those halves pairings that I think they're able to read each other very well. When one knows the other one's got the hot hand, the other one's happy to take a bit of a backward step. And I think you see that with Cam Munster quite often. If Husey is dominating and he's having one of his games, you'll see Cam Munster sort of fall back and play second fiddle. And I think Hughes does the same for Munster as well. Let's move into the forward pack. Uh, the front rowers, Nelson, Asafa Solomona, they used him last year coming off the bench a little bit. For certain games, I don't mind that, but I think he is uh, the best front row forward at the club. I think he needs to start. Christian Welsh is the other one there. As we said, coming back from injury this year, second year back uh, from a recovery. I'm expecting big things from Welshie this year. Uh, from memory, didn't play Origin last year. Um, so he's got something to prove this year, Christian Welsh. Uh, one of the smartest and best guys in rugby league. Very keen to see him back to his very best. I would love to see Welsh get back to his offloading best. So I found it bizarre that the Melbourne Storm, they've got this incredible spine and they weren't playing as much second phase footy as what I anticipated them to do last year. Uh, and I think Christian Welsh, he's a real key part of that. It's really not unusual for him to have two to three key offloads a game when the Melbourne Storm are rolling. So I would allow, I would be giving him back his offloading license. Maybe Belly didn't take it off him. Maybe he, he just decided to wrap the ball up a little bit more last year. But I want Christian Welsh offloading and back to his best this year. The hooker, uh, in my opinion, the best hooker in rugby league, Harry Grant. Very interesting to see how Bellamy uh, works with Harry Grant this year. We're seeing more and more teams move away from the 80-minute hooker. Uh, the Melbourne Storm are one of those teams. Uh, you tend to see Harry Grant play 60-odd minutes. And, you know, it, if for absolutely nothing else, when you have a look at his super coach scores, and, you know, I know that's not the be-all and end-all. It's not the greatest indicator of performance. But it's wild how much better his super coach scores are when he plays 60 minutes instead of 80. Just because he's got a little bit more in the tank, uh, you can let someone else start at hooker uh, to begin the game. They've been playing with Bronson Garlic for a lot of last year. Take the sting out of the game. Let some of the big boys get tired. Bring a fresh Harry Grant on and he can just cause havoc. For me, I think because of Cameron Smith, and how the game used to be a little bit slower than what it is now, the 80-minute hooker became the must-do thing. The best players play 80 minutes. It's complete and utter bullshit now for me. You, The game is broken into quarters, essentially. You've got the first half, second half. You've got the opening 20, then the next 20, and then the first 20 minutes after halftime, the final 20 minutes. And it's about how you rotate your guys through those four periods. Using Harry Grant in that way is going to be crucial. The second row, um, so many names here. I think the only one that you can lock in is Eli Katoa. I think he has to be on the right edge. I think his combination with Jerome Hughes improved as the year went on. Uh, I was very, very impressed with Eli Katoa, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him have a big breakout year this year. Uh, he was very good in 23, no doubt about that. But I just feel like he's got more to offer, and I feel like another season under his belt with Hughesy, another preseason at the Melbourne Storm, Eli Katoa is a big watch for me this year. I think he lines up on the right Left edge, a little bit more open. Trent Leary played there last year, did a good job. Uh, didn't blow it away for me. Uh, he's a guy that I think will be in the 17. Whether he starts on the left edge, I'm not totally convinced on that just yet. The guy that I like is Sean Bloor. He's arrived down from the West Tigers. I've always said, I've been saying it for years, and uh, injuries and stuff have held him back, I think. I think Sean Bloor has got genuine superstar potential. Sean Bloor is the first guy in a long time that Craig Bellamy has signed that I feel confident to sort of sit back and go, fuck, this one, this one could explode here. So very excited to see how Sean Bloor goes down there. If Craig Bellamy can do what we know Craig Bellamy has been capable of for the last 10 or 15 years, Sean Bloor is going to be a huge watch this year. Maybe I'm a little bit biased because I've always loved Bloor, but I would start him on the left edge uh, outside Cam Munster. He's obviously coming back from injury and stuff from last year as well. He's new to the squad. So maybe they start with uh, Trent, Trent Leroux. But, geez, I, I think Bloor, that's the spot. This is where the Jack Howarth chat comes up once again. Do you fit him in the back row there? Sure. I have no idea what's going on with Jack Howarth. I think he's got so much ability but seemingly he's either not mature enough or so, something's not working for Craig Bellamy there. Uh, you do not see Craig Bellamy. I'm like, Cameron Smith couldn't get five-year deals. Jack Howarth got one out of Melbourne somehow and we're three years into it and I think he's played one game of first grade when they rested everyone. So 
Howarth, he's as likely to pop up in the starting left edge role as he is to be number 30 in their squad. I've got no idea how it's going to work with him. The lock forward role. The Melbourne Storm are interesting. They've never really had a ball playing 13. And I think it's because their spine is so dominant. You look at all these other sides who are transitioning away from a third middle forward in the 13 jersey, having a bit of a ball player there. Um, the Melbourne Storm have just always sort of gone, no, nah, we're going to do our thing. We're going to try and win the centre third, which is what disappoints me so much that they're never able to win the middle despite sacrificing the ball playing 13. They just, they just don't have that right guy in the 13 jersey yet. Josh King was in there last year. Defensively, Josh King is unreal. He's tough as nails. A great story. He's gone the hard way around in rugby league to get to where he is. I've had a mate that grew up in Newcastle who, Harold Matson SG ball, Josh King missed the side. And uh, now he's played 100-odd first grade games down at the Melbourne Storm. And I'll give you the hot tip. Not many of those guys made it to first grade. So an incredible story for Josh King. I think he's a good option in 13, but I don't think he's the exact right answer. I've heard that potentially if Bloor starts in the air, Trent Leary could play 13. Don't know how much I'd buy that, to be completely honest with you guys, but it is something to keep an eye on. The other one is Tui Kamakamitha, who I wouldn't have an issue with him starting there. As I said, the Melbourne Storm, they don't really use that 13 jersey as a ball player, so I can understand if they went in that direction, uh, but I would probably lean towards Josh King. I'd rather use Tui off my bench for impact. Speaking of the bench, let's get stuck into those four jerseys there. And I've got about 45 names written down here. So best of luck to you. Best of luck to me to work this out. And good luck to Craig Bellamy. Jersey 14. Um, I personally would run with a utility of some sort. Either Bronson Garlic, which means that he would probably start at nine. Harry Grant would be a 14. Bronson Garlic is one option, of course. Uh, part of the Garlic Pie Empire. Uh, Garlic, he can play hooker. He can play in the halves if you're desperate. He can play in the back row at a pretty high click i like having him in the side the other one if he hasn't made the side anywhere else maybe a saw far longer now i personally don't think the melbourne storm have the forward pack to run with a guy that cannot play in the forwards in jersey 14 but i'm not sure if craig bellamy believes that uh we've saw we've seen on a number of occasions over the last couple of years that craig bellamy has quite often run with a jersey 14 like garlic and then had like a grant anderson on the bench or someone like that so Maybe Sewer does get a spot on the bench just to get him experience. I'm not too sure. I would rather just have him in Queensland Cup playing fullback, playing 80 minutes a week with Craig Bellamy, giving him things to work on, things to focus on, uh, you know, catching up with Billy Slater, talking about his game and whatnot. But maybe he does get a spot on the bench. The other one, though, and this is probably the direction I would go in, and I know he's not the biggest guy in the world, but fuck, he's talented. Tyrant Wishart. Uh, obviously, a Jerringong local, son of rugby league royalty, Rod Wishart. I've always been a huge Wishy fan, and I would have him in my team week to week. There was a couple of games last year. I think Husey was out at the back end of the season. He played halfback, did really well. He was fantastic in their semifinal against the Chooks, I believe it was. He was great. He'd be my 14. I'd start him at nine. I'd bring Harry Grant on later, and then I would just use Wishy somewhere else. He's too tough for his own good. Not a bad defender. He's got a. He's got you know really good leg speed, and he's just got a high footy IQ. I'd be happy to chuck him on in like jersey 13 at some point throughout the game. But I get Bronson Garlic is the better defender, probably the better guy to have through the middle. But I'd be chasing the upside of Tyron Wishart. That's your 14 jersey. Every chance Craig Bellamy just goes with four forwards, though, but I'd be going with a utility like that. Jersey 15, 16, 17. For me, if you don't have Josh King in your starting side, he gets one of these spots. Josh King can't miss the 17. Uh, I think Tui Kamakamitha has to be one of them. I think Trent Leary, if he hasn't made the starting side, he has to be one of them. Sean Bloor, if he hasn't made the starting side, he probably has to be one of them. So between those five or six guys, they will fit into 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17. The guys that we haven't spoken about that I think will be a good sniff to get in there. Alec McDonald. I think he's been very, very solid for a long time. The only chin to rival Nathan Cleary in our game. I think it's very evident that Craig Bellamy fancies him as a footballer. Just tough. Does his job every single week. Alec McDonald will be there and thereabouts. Uh, Aaron Penne, one I spoke about briefly before. I think this guy's got so much potential. He just hasn't quite been able to put it all together yet. But I just, I still feel like a breakout season at some point is coming for Aaron Penne and the sooner the better for the Melbourne Storm. They need someone like him to really step up. Tepai Moroa, obviously still there. 
came into the Parramatta Eels, came through the Newington Rugby Union system, went to the Waratahs, landed back at the Melbourne Storm. I think he'll be better for the run last year. Maybe a guy a little smoky there. You've obviously got uh, Joe Chan as well, who I'm a big, big fan of. Didn't quite put it together last year. Was good in Q Cup. Jack Howarth is another one on this list, again, that could make this bench side. So a lot of guys to pick from there. I think the Melbourne Storm, their side is reasonably easy to predict. It's just a couple of key positions. It's not key positions. Guys in their back row and their bench that you could probably throw a dart at a million options and maybe hit the right one. Uh, a lot of different combos there. I think a lot of it will come down to trials. I also think a lot of it will come down to how Sean Bloor goes in the trials. If Sean Bloor brains it on the edge, I think he'll lock down a spot, uh, which will pretty much sort it out. The other option is playing Sean Bloor at 13, uh, which I don't mind. A lot of people don't seem to fancy that. But I think he's got the potential to be able to play there. Uh, Sean Bloor, obviously, captain of, like, New South Wales, under 16s, 18s, coming through the system. Was at Penrith, couldn't really get a opportunity there. Had to move to the West Tigers. Injuries have sort of derailed him there. Now at the Melbourne Storm with a big opportunity. I think where he plays will dictate a lot of other positions. Uh, but, look, as I said at the start, for me... What the Melbourne Storm need in 2024 is for someone to really jump out of this forward pack. They really need a Penne, uh, Tepo Moroa, one of these guys to jump out of the ground, a Jack Howard, whoever it might be, because for me, they're just one strike forward short of really competing with these top sides. And if the forward pack, all they have to do is find a way to match it with these big sides and your spine will take care of the rest. Over to Craig Bellamy now to see what he can do with this side. I think you would be very, very brave uh, to tip Harry Grant, Cameron Munster, Jerome Hughes and Ryan Pappenhausen to miss the top four. I think they'll be right up there with the very best of them once again. Once we get to September, though, that's my big question. Can they compete with the best of the best on the biggest stages and under the brightest lights?